join us every weekend for the 2021 AFL Final Series, live on the True Footy YouTube channel. Alright, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for the semi-final edition of Just The Tips. Unfortunately, spent all day at Drizzy's today, filmed Drew Footy Show, filmed this, uh, only to get home and realize that the SD card just has no recollection that we recorded it. So yeah, anyway, gonna have to just record uh, probably a shorter video for you now. Literally got to the point of opening this up to edit it and to find that the file's just, just not there apparently. But that's cool, that's cool. I did check the camera and it did definitely record it, but that's cool. It was an awesome first round of the, the final series. Didn't quite live up to last year where we had four absolute thrillers, but four very good contests. And we saw teams like Melbourne and Port Adelaide in particular flex their muscles saw some disappointing results for the losers this round. Before we get into the semi-finals, do need to shout out the weekly winners. Uh, Druzy, I actually beat him in footy tipping last round, uh, but with five games to go, he still leads me by 12 uh, with 134 uh, correct tips. He's also ranked 53rd in the overall comp. I have shot back into the top 400 in 382nd uh, with an overall score of 122 and I'm slowly catching dad although he is six tips ahead of me in 210th and uh, with just five games to go in the season he has officially beaten me again which sucks. Wouldn't have been the easiest round of tipping. I think most people would have got three but Green Machine 4 was the winner of this round with four correct tips and a margin of 18 so that's excellent tipping to pick GWS this week uh, when not many people would have and not being tempted in tepping Essendon to beat the dogs. Green Machine has done a very good job, so well done. But the overall leader is still the Wing It podcast with 142 correct tips going back to back this week. There's still five games left in the season, guys. So don't forget to do your tips, especially if you're at the pointy end of the ladder. Today, Just the Tips is brought to you by NordVPN. If you are looking for an excellent VPN service, they are the fastest VPN provider you can actually get on the market. You can get 70% off by going to nordvpn.com. Left the link in the description of this video. A VPN is really, really good. Uh, you know, if you're outside Australia and want to watch KO Sports, for instance, you can just log in through an Australian server and watch it as well. We did live stream the Jake Paul fight earlier today against Tyron Woodley. Uh, we watched that on KO Sports. So if you're outside Australia and you want to watch fights like that in the future, a VPN is a great way to tune into all the action. So like I said, check out the website and you get 70% off, which is enormous. Before getting into the tips this round, do want to acknowledge the two teams that were eliminated this round. Sydney, such a disappointing way to end their season. They're a young up and coming side. And I think when the dust settles, they'll probably reflect on this season as not being, uh, it'll be a net positive. It won't be the most gut-wrenching way to go out, but you could see the emotion on the players. They wanted to at least go deep. And when you win 15 games for the season, uh, generally those teams are in the mix. Uh, two of the last five premiers have won the premiership with a 15 and seven record. So overall disappointing. I thought Isaac Kearney was huge, four goals and 21 touches, almost dragged his side over the line, but ultimately it was just those crucial misses in front of goal late in the game uh, that cost them. Essendon, on the other hand, you know, they battled hard against the Dogs, ended up losing by 49 points, and I think the scoreline probably didn't do them justice. They were closer than that for most of the game, but I think it was eight goals unanswered in the second half to the Dogs, and Essendon just couldn't generate the scoring opportunities, finishing with four goals, 12. You know, Peter Wright, who was a big factor in the last time those two sides met, in the wet conditions, couldn't really get his hands on the footy, so back to the drawing board for them, but ultimately, overall, pretty encouraging season. Later in the year, when the finals were all done, uh, Bush and I will do another podcast reviewing the uh, seasons of the eight teams that made the finals because we're at the moment still rolling out the teams that didn't make the finals. So stay tuned for that on the channel as well. Let's talk about these semifinals. Uh, two really exciting ones. Nice to have one in Perth. I don't know if I'm going to be able to attend or even watch this game at the moment with work. So don't think I can promise a true footy live stream this round, but I'm sure Drew is doing something. So stay tuned for that. But I'm still very excited. Uh, it's cool to have a final in Perth. And this round, you know, with a lot's been talked about, you know, big name recruits this year, Joey Danaher, Jeremy Cameron, Adam Trelaw, all three will be featuring in this week of semifinals. Both of these games, I think, have genuine upset potential. But we'll start off by talking about Geelong versus GWS. This game is fixtured for Friday night at Optus Stadium around 5.50 Perth time. Last week, we saw the Cats get easily outmuscled by Port Adelaide. It was a game where probably I did tip Port Adelaide, but didn't expect it to be as one-sided as it was. They were genuinely too good for the Cats. Even though the Cats dominated the clearances, I think they had 15 to three uh, of the center clearances go their way, but I think it was on the outside, the post clearance 
uh, contested possession differential, as it's talked about. Uh, Port Adelaide were too good, too good on the outside. And, uh, you know, the Cats had some passengers, some key players. It wasn't a really even performance from the Cats, and ultimately it cost them. Although that being said, uh, they're not typically really good in the first week of finals, are they? So I'm sort of prepared to give them a little bit of a mulligan for that. And they're coming up against the GWS Giants, who just upset, you would have to say, the Swans in Tasmania. They've proven themselves to be, you know, a pretty good final side, to be honest. You know, the team that made the grand final two years ago, um, they had to do it the hard way by winning three finals on the way to the grand final, two of which uh, were away from home, if I'm not mistaken. One in Queensland, and one in the MCG. And again, uh, while this was a neutral venue, they were still coming up against a side that was clearly better this year. And I think going into this game, a lot of it, my expectation will ride on whether or not Toby Green gets off. So as I'm recording this, he's been sent to the tribunal. And um, if he misses, that's probably a huge avenue to goal and a huge avenue to a Giants win that will, you know, not be a factor. So I'm interested to see the result of that. You know, when I first saw the Toby Green incident, I kind of thought that looks really not on. It looks like he did, him, it did hit the umpire, but um, looking back on the replays, it kind of looks like the umpire might've just turned uh, right at the critical moment, so I'm not really too sure. And uh, Frankly, I haven't heard the umpire actually come out and speak on the issue. Uh, I'm sure that will all come out t tomorrow morning or something. But looking past that, the Giants you know, played really well. They had 19 less inside 50s, but were frankly just far more efficient um, with their opportunities, even though I thought Jesse Hogan bobbed up and in his first final, kicked a couple of goals and took a couple of crucial marks. A couple of them hit the post from memory as well, which you know nearly not lost them the game. But, uh, you know, it's nice for the Giants to have that tall presence. Obviously, this is their first year without Jeremy Cameron. And I feel like uh, a big key forward presence in this final could really help them. It's worth not noting that uh, this is a neutral venue and the Giants kind of have the wood on the Cats. They've won their last three battles against Geelong, uh, two of which were at GMHBA Stadium. So genuinely play well against them, uh, but the Giants have also only played once in Perth this year and lost to Fremantle, whereas Geelong smashed Fremantle. I think Geelong played pretty well at Optus Stadium, to be honest. They've always given the Eagles a really good run there, uh, you know, when we've been a good team um, and generally played well against Fremantle too. So look, overall, I think there is a lot of upset potential, particularly if Toby Green plays. I hope he does play. Uh, I don't want that to be part of the, the decision-making process. We don't necessarily want to pick uh, or allow Toby Green to play simply because we want to see him play. Uh, it has to be on the merits. We need just to serve, but hopefully he plays. Either way, I'm going to tip Geelong. Geelong will win this by 22 points uh, to quieten down the haters a little bit after a poor week one performance. The second semi-final is an absolute big in Brisbane versus the Bulldogs at the Gabba. And Drews and I, when we first recorded this, sort of reflected on the, the fact that we didn't expect this game a few weeks ago to be a semi-final. This more looks like a prelim or even potentially a grand final matchup. But obviously the dogs slipping out of that top four means they're going to have to do it the hard way and take on the Lions at the Gabba. The Lions were undone by a far superior Melbourne side. It has to be said, you know, they, they fought valiantly, didn't score a goal in the second term, held Melbourne school, uh, goalless in the third term, but, you know, couldn't capitalize on their own opportunities, only kicked a couple goals themselves. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, Melbourne are just a fair bit better, I would have to say. Charlie Cabard kicked five goals. It's his first final Adelaide Oval since, um, you know, he was an Adelaide Crows player, kicked five goals in that last final and kicked five goals this time. So it's nice to see him sort of rebuilding film right at the important part of this season and of course McStay is going to be concussed he took a nasty hit and uh, I'd imagine won't be playing in this game and you take out Hitwood too and it's pretty much just Danaher and the other forwards there that are going to really have to uh, do the heavy lifting for this game so that is a blow for the Lions but with Charlie Cameron in the former years they still got dangerous avenues to go. Lockie Neal was enormous against Melbourne he had 46 touches and I didn't know that he got the ball that many times but I, and I honestly don't remember the last time someone had 46 in a final so I'd love to hear in the comments when was the last time that happened um, you guys are so good at doing my research for me on the dog side of things they just out muscled Essendon winning winning by 49 points in a, a very wet weather affair Cody Waitman um, featured heavily he had four goals although the fact they're all from free kicks I think he drew a bit of criticism from this game but either way can't deny the talent um, he is a bit of an x-factor player for the Bulldogs and of course they also uh, they're kind of cancelling out Brisbane with their own 
forward, well, their best forward this year, Josh Bruce, not being available. I thought McRae was big, and ultimately, the, I think this condition suited the Bulldogs, even though, I, I, as I said, I thought Essendon were closer in theory than 49 points would suggest. Uh, the Bulldogs were far too good, and frankly, I'm glad to see that. I would have been really disappointed if both the Bulldogs and Sydney had been, had been eliminated in week one of this final series. In terms of the head-to-head -head between these two sides, Dogs have beaten the Lions this year. They only played once. It was at uh, Ballarat. Um, and I think the Lions were struggling a little bit early season. So a lot has changed since then. So I don't know how much to read into that. Um, and equally, the Lions haven't lost to the Dogs at the Gabba since 2017, before this team became the team it currently is, uh, winning both games since that period. So I think there's a genuine home ground advantage here for the Lions. Um, I think it'll be a dry semi-final from what I expect, but still with that home crowd, despite the fact the Lions have only won one from four home finals in the last two years, I think they'll get the job done here. And I think they'll beat the Dogs and go to take on the power at Adelaide Oval next Saturday night in a prelim. So that's it, guys. That is short and sweet my tips for these semifinals. Uh, for the record, Druzy agreed with me on both games. We're both tipping Geelong and the Brisbane Lions, the favourites to get up in this game. Although uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Toby Green does play and plays an absolute blinder. It'll set up two huge prelims. Melbourne taking on Geelong. Uh, I think they've got a nice little rivalry going. It'll be great to see them hopefully in the flesh next uh, yeah, yeah, next Friday night uh, at uh, Optus Stadium. And the power host in the Lions who have gotten the better of the power the last few times but generally they've been playing at the Gabba so uh, I think we will be left with the four best teams in the competition but that's it guys short and sweet let me know what you think of my predictions what are your predictions who do you think is the more likely upset the dogs beating the Lions this week or the Cats losing to the Giants to be honest any result is conceivable here for me uh, but I'm interested in your thoughts as I said before go check out the sponsors of today's video and do tune in for what I expect will be a live stream on Drew's channel this weekend otherwise just stay tuned for heaps of content coming out on the True Footy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next week. Cheers.